Hello fellow modelers, it's Mitko from DN Models. Long time no see. Today we will we'll be discussing Ghost of Kiev. And without further ado, let's get straight to that point. And that is MiG-29 in its specific variant suitable for Ghost of Kiev or also known as Ghost of Ukraine in digital camo scheme. Now, there are three possible scales that I'm going to discuss today because all the three are suitable for applying masks and paint the camouflage. No decals, just as the real deal jet. Decals only for the insignia maybe, but that's it, nothing more. Those scales are 72nd, 48 and 32nd. Not that this is a big surprise anyhow, but let's clarify that from the get-go. We'll start with the smallest one and upscale from then on, but first let's uh, talk specifics on the variant. It is a MiG-29S, also known as Isdelia 913 or Product 913 Translated. It is often mistakenly called MiG-29C, as in Charlie. It is not a C, it is an S like in Sierra. It is, however, Fulcrum C as a designation by NATO, but MiG-29S. Hope that it is understandable the way I explain it. It is a letter misunderstanding, probably because S in Slavic is written exactly like the C in Western alphabets. This is an upgraded version of the initial MiG-29 variants with computer augmentation systems for better control, higher angle of attack limitations, and the possibility to be equipped with underwing tanks, which is not an option on the previous variants. Again, as before, 4 tons of payload, max takeoff weight around 20 tons, slightly upgraded here, and of course upgraded capability of Independence went on a mission, meaning uh, that compared to the earlier variants, uh, the pilot here is more in control, unlike before when uh, the pilots were more reliant on the ground control and guidance for completing the mission successfully. Visibly distinguishable by the larger spine, especially noticeable behind the canopy. And pretty much that sums it up. Now let's go to the models, the rest you can find out by yourselves and I'm pretty sure that you'll be very successful because there are plenty of information, articles and so on on the web currently, especially on 913. First let's start with 70 second scale. A lot of kits on the market, both as toolings and repacked options. Unfortunately though, none of those with 21st century qualities. Many consider Zvezda as a good kit. I will deviate here a bit to tell you why I think you should avoid that specific kit. First off, Zvezda kits are made from a second grade plastic. Like that statement or not, it is a fact. The material used is not overly good. I won't even start on the clear parts, but in general, this is not the best option you can get in terms of materials. Second, Zvezda is a Russian company. Worldwide, there is a trend of banning Russian-made stuff on all levels, because this is, in one way or another, booster to their economy, and in this particular case as of today, March 2022, is eventually pumping fresh assets into an aggressor that invaded Ukraine. So it is a no-go. I don't try to be political here, I'm trying to be objective. If it was my choice, I would steer away from Zvezda now and possibly in the near future as well. They might not deserve it, but they will get it as well. Even without that in mind, the kit is not a very good option, besides its price. Zvezda kits are cheap, and you gotta give them that. 
The MiG-29 that you should go for, if you ask me of course, is the Trumpeter one in that scale. It is very nice kit and although featuring some discrepancies, it seems to be a very good option. I'd like to recommend ICM kit, but for various reasons I am not, most important of which is the same invasion in Ukraine, uh, with ICM being Ukrainian company. It will be most likely with uh, limited availability very soon, if not as of today, and it might create additional pressure for the company now the probably being victims of the ongoing war. Also, I find it to be more simplistic than Trumpeter. So if you ask me, I would go for Trumpeter. Wider availability, decent tooling, nice kit overall. With that said, again, I will repeat that there is no really decent kit of the fulcrum and 21st century tooling as of today. And for the 8 scale, things are very different. And to not waste any of your precious time while watching YouTube videos, I will get straight to the point here. The MiG-29 S913 that you should aim for if you're building Ghost of Kiev is the Great Wall hobby. And for me, that is unconditional statement. The Great Wall hobby kits are very good overall. Not perfect, rather expensive, but I believe they worth every cent. On some places, the Great Wall Hobby Kit is a bit exaggerated. Some positions of the ailerons are not correct for parked aircraft specifically. Some panels are overdone, but in the end, there is no perfect kit out there. The thing is, Great Wall Hobby is close to the perfection and currently there is no better option for a fulcrum. If you can get that, you can easily forget about the rest in all other scales. This is the most accurate kit as far as I am informed. Now let's upscale again. Limited options there, unfortunately the only decent one is Trumpeter, which is more of an acceptable compromise than a kit that you really want to do. The MiG-29 in 30 seconds from Trumpeter is simplistic for its scale, but in the same time is a decent price and again widespread availability. You gotta be careful though, Trumpeter offer older tooling of the MiG-29 and if you go specifically for Ghost of Kiev, you need to shoot for MiG-29C, which is marked mistakenly on the box. We discussed that earlier. This is MiG-29 S, not C. Not that this is any surprise when it comes down to Trumpeter or most of the Chinese companies out there. For me, this kit is acceptable and I like Trumpeter no matter how mediocre some of their kits are. Even though one of the planes I adore being the Flogger was ruined completely by that same company, I still give them credit for their toolings. Some of them are brilliant. So again, if you like my opinion and if you're currently building Ghost of Kiev, which many of you are interested nowadays in, I would go for Trumpeter and 30 second scale, not any other kit. And I assure you that with a little effort, the kit will shine. Not like Great Wall Hobby Kit, but still this will be in the end way, way bigger. Now I will conclude with a few words for Ghost of Kiev and Ukraine. If you don't like to hear that, skip and go to the next video. If you do, bear with me here, no mulling ahead. Only other stuff. I consider this as a separate video, but I won't go for it because it won't fit the narrative of the channel as such. Also, it is not for the faint-hearted and the following is rated PG whatever and will definitely frustrate deeply MiG-29 fans. First off, Ghost of Kiev is most likely a myth. There are many reasons for that, but downing several planes for a day, among which Su-35, Su-27, Su-25 and such is simply too good to be true. First off, 
Su-25 might be slow, ugly and crippled in terms of altitude flying, but it's tough like a brick. How exactly are you shooting that down? This is very, very sturdy aircraft. Then, Su-27 family is far, far superior than the Fulcrum. Eventually, on those jet, uh, everything works better than on the MiG-29. In reality, they don't work as they are expected, both the flanker and the Fulcrum. But flanker showed the better results from the get-go, and this is a known fact. Speaking of which, downing Su-35, in my personal opinion, would be possible only if you put like a dog in the controls of the flanker. This is a jet at a whole new level compared to the 913. The Russian pilots flying in Ukraine are toughened by the events in Syria, and let's not fool ourselves, they fly a lot more hours than the Ukrainians. Which, in the end, is the single most important thing in dogfights. How do you work the systems when you can barely fly the plane because there was not enough money in the first place? This is a disease that is spread among most of the former Warsaw Pact countries. The air forces struggle to maintain their pilots in, let's say, combat condition. And on the funny side, in a clear day, you don't even need to work any of the system to spot a MiG-29, you just look for the smoke. Ghost of Kiev seems to be a very good morale booster, but the idea most likely came from myths like Ghost of Syria, Ghost of Tripoli, Ghost of Baghdad and such that are always MiG-29s and are always winning against clearly better plane and better trained pilots. There are even videos made in DCS dedicated to that. And I am firmly with the opinion that this was created by some pilot wannabe DCS player that doesn't really understand how modern aerial warfare works. Also, there are games involving ghosts for the PlayStation fans, Ghost of Tsushima, recently released. So, the idea was the same as single fighter fighting against an occupying force, overwhelming occupying force? Nah, this probably isn't true. In the same time, with all that said, we gotta know that MiG-29 fans are fanatically devoted and are refusing to take the bitter truth that this plane is a mediocre attempt to create a fourth generation jet with a cockpit and armament of a third generation fighter and most ridiculously of all being a light twin jet. Two things that are mutually exclusive. If you wonder why I mentioned this, well, MiG-29 was designed to be a cheap option in between it and the flanker and comparable with an F-16. Since Soviets didn't have good enough engine or digital controls, they made it in uh, their own Soviet variation with two engines and with controls dictated by the very same idea as the flogger in technical terms. So, it might fly very nicely at air shows, especially when low on fuel, but in reality, as a war machine, it is a piece of junk. It had some potential, it just wasn't in the right hands and it wasn't developed in the right direction. There is no dogfights anymore. Everything was translated into a digital age and MiG-29 was conceived as an analog kit. If you disagree with all that, dig up MiG-29 air terror records. That should be enough. However, Ghost of Kiev is becoming a legend and some legends, even though we know that aren't truthful, are really fascinating. Just like Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. It is very cool with that camouflage and, as I've said, some people are in deep, deep love with that jet because it's cheap, no harm, but pretty much that's all. So, as a conclusion, aside from all that, Ukraine is in deep need. And I firmly stand with Ukrainian people. I have friends from there and they are all very good, honest and friendly people. 
Shout out to Alina, Ben, Vlad and Alex especially. Some of the very best mulling companies are from there too. But above all, no matter which side you're on, war of such extent and with such weapons in 21st century is unacceptable. I am strongly against what is happening right there right now and I believe there are other ways. Dialogue is among those, honest one per se. So let's hope that will end soon. Thank you for watching, hope you liked the video and good luck to everybody in Ukraine. We are helping the best way we can with whatever comes to mind. Let's all pray for peace there. Have a great day everybody.